no need to wear boots in here um, heck I've got the door wide open and it's still probably 70 in here but I've got boots on this morning hired boots on because I've been chopping firewood and it's soaking wet outside because it's been raining all night so a couple different pairs of footwear is always going to be good in a situation like this um what I wanted to do this morning real quick was while I'm getting this fire stoked up for the day real real good here I'm going to make some flatbread that I'm going to carry with me on a scout oftentimes in nomadic periods and in nomadic cultures you know some of the hunters would leave the nomadic camps for a day or two days to go out and secure meat and that's exactly what my plan is um, in the next few days I'm going to strike this camp I'm going to leave this camp for a day excuse me and take just a knapsack with me um, which we'll go over later and I'm going to go out and actually hunt for the day at a location toward the very back of this property actually off my 65 and onto someone else's property and um, then I've got permission to hunt and I'm going to stay overnight there and then come back the next day so I'm preparing myself a couple of sundries that I can take with me that are pre-prepped like a couple flatbreads and then I've got you know some salt cured bacon to take with me as well of course and anything I collect along the way so this morning I wanted to get stuff together to make a few uh, flatbread type cakes to take with me um, on this excursion so that's what I'm gonna do this morning okay so the first thing I'm gonna do this morning is I'm gonna fry up some bacon because I haven't had anything to eat yet today. I'm going to fry up some of this salt cured bacon. I'm going to save that bacon grease and the salted, the real salty grease that's going to be in this pan. I'm going to save that for use with my flatbread. So I'm just going to cut myself a couple of fairly thin slices off of here. And again, I don't want to cut through this paper because it's what I'm storing my meat in. So I'm being kind of careful not to do that. You can hear a little bit of rain on top of the yurt right now. Um, there was a little bit of confusion yesterday, I think, on the video I shot when I was talking about mentors and mentoring and things like that. I think some people kind of got confused about what I was talking about. I really wasn't telling people that you shouldn't have any mentors. What I was trying to tell people was is that you should learn from everyone and don't get tunnel vision with a single mentor or a single one or two mentors and focus your thoughts in on the way they think and nothing else everybody has to learn for themselves and even having mentors that I had you know that are long since gone like Daniel Boone, Davy Crockett, Lewis and Clark, uh, Nesmick, George Washington Sears people like that um, you know, I can learn from those mentors, from their writings, from their journals, and things of that nature, but without going out and experimenting for myself, I don't know that their techniques work for me. And not everything that works for me will work for you. So, you know, that, that was my encouragement in that talk, was to seek lots of resources for education, because everyone should learn from everybody. And that's always been kind of my theme or my thought process when I created the thought, the Pathfinder system and the Pathfinder school was let's all learn together and that's what it's I think about. it's important that we learn from everybody and don't focus our attention on one person that we think you know is the one true all know all of self-reliance because there's no such thing we're all students of the wilderness you know I gotta tell you guys uh, sitting here thinking about comments and things that I read on the internet and on my videos and on my channel and things like that and one of the things that I've uh, seen lately is you know that person made a comment on my channel that there's no way that you know this yurt could be used for a nomadic existence this is a semi-permanent camp well it is a semi-permanent camp in that it's here and it's not going to move until I decide to move it okay but the fact is with a structure like this this year it weighs 200 pounds when it's fully packed up Okay, everything inside of it probably weighs another 200 pounds, maybe more. But for what I'm talking about and the purpose of this experiment was not to find out if I could pull this thing out of here with a horse and buggy or pull it out of here with a travoy and a horse or a cart and an ox. The reason for this was to see if I could 
feasibly take a shelter like this, put it up, live in it for 30 days, take it down and move it if I had to in a vehicle, okay? This thing came here in a vehicle. Um, I did a video of the setup of this yurt um, when the lady from American Yurts came out here and set it up the first time. It came out here in a very small SUV, in the back of a very small SUV. Um, the longest support pole on this thing is six feet long, maybe a little over six feet. It's not like it's 18 foot TP poles, it's six feet long. So it's not that difficult and everything is lightweight that's on it other than the canvas is probably the heaviest part of it all. So. To think that you could put this in the back of an SUV or on a small trailer behind an SUV and pull it to another location is not far-fetched whatsoever. It could be easily done. Um, I probably will not break this thing down and try to do that until spring. There's no reason to try to do that in the wintertime, I don't think. Um, maybe there is. I'll have to think about that. But um, the fact is, all I wanted to see was the livability of the structure that's supposed to be a, uh, a temporary yurt that is rented for a weekend camping situation. This is a mobile yurt. It's a temporary structure. It was never meant to be lived in necessarily when it was built. I wanted to see if I could modify it so that it could be lived in. That was the purpose of my experiment. So we need to understand that, I think, before we worry about, you know, is this a mobile structure? Is it not a mobile structure? Could we use this thing for a nomadic existence? And all of that stuff because, number one, I say we could. Number two, I say that's not really the purpose of this experiment. But, you know, to each his own, everybody's got an opinion, and uh, I like to hear them all. I just like to explain sometimes when people ask me things like that, or make comments like that, I like to explain myself to them. We're getting a pretty good amount of grease in here now, and that's good, because that's what I was looking for. Um, we're getting cooked up. Once I get this bacon cooked, this is basically going to be part of my breakfast. I'm going to use that grease um, to make my flat cakes, my flat bread, whatever you want to call the, the a substance made from flour and water, basically. Um, because I just want the salt content and the bacon flavor in there is the only reason I'm doing this.